I have three go-to arguments that I tend to use against flat earthers when debating the shape of the earth. These arguments are very important for a few different reasons. First, they're relatively easy to explain, allowing me to quickly lay out my point and have the other person understand it without getting too much into the mathematics or the astronomy of the whole thing. Additionally, all three of these arguments have absolutely nothing to do with NASA, ESA, JAXA, Roscosmos, SpaceX, or any of the others. These are things that rely on human observation and simple logic. The last, and possibly most significant point, is that I have never seen a flat earther answer any of these questions with any measure of reason. Question 1. Where is the sun? The flat earth theory is extremely lacking when it comes to astronomical bodies beyond the earth. The moon is one thing, but let's take a look at its daylight counterpart. In case you're unaware, the scientific community's view of the sun's location is that it is approximately 150 million kilometers away and has a diameter of almost 1.4 million kilometers. This was first determined by Greek astronomer Aristarchus around 250 BC, using the phases of the moon and trigonometry to roughly determine that the sun was 19 times further away from the planet as the moon. While it was imprecise, this laid the groundwork for later astronomers like Giovanni Cassini to more accurately determine the distance. So, what does the flat earth say about all of this? Rubbish, of course. The sun is a part of the firmament, or dome, that encloses the earth from edge to edge and puts a barrier between us and the heavens. Of course. How do they determine this? Honestly, who knows, but there's a big problem with their view. The model varies depending on who you ask, mostly because none of the models can actually answer all of the problems people have with them, but it always involves both the sun and the moon being much, much closer than we know them to be. The biggest problem with this is the problem of perspective. We all know that perspective causes objects to appear smaller as the distance to them increases. What this means is that the sun, if it were located relatively close to the earth, would have an angular change in size from our perspective. However, it never does. Numerous experiments have been done on this, both to confirm the distance or to prove it wrong, and not once has the sun been shown to have an angular change in size from our perspective. The reason for this is because it is very, very far away. Thanks to trigonometry and modern scientific equipment, we know it's approximately 93 million miles away in fact. Question 2. Why is the North Star Polaris not visible in the Southern Hemisphere? Polaris is, currently, what's known as the North Star, or Pole Star, located almost directly above the Earth's North Pole. Located approximately 433 light years away, Polaris has the stellar designation of Alpha Ursi Minoris and is part of the Ursa Minor constellation. Fun fact, it's also not one star. Polaris comprises Polaris AA, the main yellow giant, Polaris AB, a smaller companion that orbits it, and the two together are in orbit with Polaris B. In fact, our star is relatively rare in that it's the only star in the system. These comprise our current pole star the brightest object that is closely aligned with Earth's axis of rotation. At one time in history, another star fulfilled this role, Thuban, also known as Alpha Draconis. However, stars move, a process known as stellar drift. Polaris took over this role around 500 AD, when it was still about 8 degrees off from the axis. Due to the precession of the equinoxes, basically the tilting of the Earth, sometime in the future, a star in the constellation Cepheus will replace Polaris. So, where does Flat Earth come into all this? Well, simply put, Polaris is invisible south of the equator. You can see it staying completely still, at least to our eyes, for the entire night until you enter the Southern Hemisphere. Some people take long exposure photographs of the night sky that produce what are called star trails, and in these photos, we can very clearly see every star rotating as a circle around Polaris directly above us. This is because once you pass the equator, the curve of the Earth is hiding Polaris from view. There is, to my knowledge, absolutely no flat Earth model that can account for this phenomenon. Question 3. Why do ships disappear over the horizon bottom up? I can feel the flatties inching forward in their seats for this one. I know they won't be able to shut their mouths long enough to read that final hyphenated word in the question, which is the key point. Of course, we all know that ships disappear over the horizon because they're moving below the curve of the Earth. 
However, the Flat Earther belief is that the ship is disappearing due to perspective. Essentially, we can't see far enough. But with a powerful enough optical zoom lens, like the one found on the Nikon P900, the ships can be brought back into view. While this is true to a point, our eyes don't have zoom capability, and things do become too small to see with the naked eye before they pass over the curve, it's not entirely true. There is a point at which even a zoom lens will not be able to pick up the ships any further, and they will disappear, starting with the hull. This is the part that the Flat Earthers can't explain. No part of the law of perspective accounts for the disappearance beginning at the bottom. Absolutely none. Not only this, but it does not account for the fact that objects sinking below the horizon do not get smaller while doing so. Perspective implies that the vanishing point is when the object becomes too small to see, but that is not what we observe. The reason for this is simple. It's because the ships are following the curve of the round Earth. That's all I have to say about this one because it's very simple. It is one of the three questions that I have never been given a satisfactory answer to by anyone who does not believe that the Earth is a spinning globe. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like this video, like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. Thank you, and I'm out. Over the next hill, beyond the horizon. Find your place in space. Space is vast and unexplored. There's a lot of work to do.